so Costa Rica won, Jamaica won. Um, yes, uh, not a disappointing result in regards to points, but definitely a performance. We can say that we 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 put in a shift. We really really put put in a shift. And uh, yes, the reason why I said it's a it's a disappointing result is because we wanted three points without a doubt, without any own of a doubt we wanted that three points we didn't get the three points we only walk away with one but we are very much grateful for it now you can you see how happy the fan base is about one point can you imagine three now what i want to do i want to give you guys a bit of insight in how the 1998 world cup went you guys can also do some research and correct me if i'm wrong um i'm going to give you some insight on that and how how this world cup campaign is a similar similar start to that of the 1998 World Cup campaign. So we're going to divulge into that and also show you the table, um, how the table um, matriculated when the, the, for the finals um, and how we, <clears throat> the pointing that we had to went into the World Cup qualifiers. Then now we're going to speak about three regular boy players, three players that I, I, I believe last, last night um, stood out the most. Um, they stood out the most. Now there's also a, uh, noticeable mention in one particular player i'll be getting to that quite soon so first of all let's go um the three players let, you know what let, let me tell the three players that I, I'm, I'm i'm going to give you highlights these players the three players stand out um Tariq mcgee anthony grant andre blake and then now i'm going to give you the one unnoticeable one that a lot of people i believe that they are looking past what he did but i'm going to go straight into that um quite soon but first let me show you guys the world cup campaign um, how we started off the World Cup campaign and how it finished um, in 1998. So guys, before I do anything, before I go any further, what I want you guys to do is smash the like button. I didn't ask you at the initial stage of the video because most of the time, a lot of people ask at the initial stage of the video and then you don't do it, but you forgot. So you just end up don't do it. And then now if you haven't subscribed as well, you still don't do it. Because you don't remember, because you want information. But guess what? I give you prior information. Now I'm giving you time so that you can go and smash that like button. Definitely, people, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't as well, hit the subscribe button as well. I would totally appreciate it also. Now, this is my tweet. I tweeted, this World Cup campaign is almost similar to that of the 1998 campaign. Now, Hopefully, we can pick up some good results in the next few fixtures. I'm pre I'm I'm really hoping that you guys can see my screen and how it looks. So Jamaica 1998 World Cup qualifiers game without the UK reggae boys coming in. Um, we had we played like we played five games without the UK players. We had Jamaica drew nil all with USA, Mexico. But the first three games, people, the first three games, we only picked up um, two points from the first three games. And, you know, we're in a similar situation right now where we, we're only on one point. Now, Jamaica drew with USA in Nilal. Mexico beat us six goals to zero. Then drew as well with Canada. Now, the next game, we, we, we lost to Costa Rica three goals to one. Then we beat El Salvador one goal to nil but as i said the first three games we only walked away with two points that is a position that we are in right now only one point well yeah two is not different from one but it's just another extra point with only one point now the next two fixtures would have been the next two fixtures we have coming up which is the usa and the mexico team now if you should think about it those last two fixtures was costa rica and, 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 and El Salvador. We lost one and we drew one. So after five games, after five games, we were on, um, let's see, one point, two point. We're on five points. After five games, we were on five points, only scoring <laughs> two goals after five games. After five games, we all scored two goals and we're on um, four points. Now, we conceded as well conceded as well nine goals in that in, in that in that um first five games conceded nine and we all scored two goals so it's not like we were doing exceptionally well we weren't we weren't doing exceptionally well no this was actually with our local players this was actually with our local players that were trying to get some things up you know play, we always have players in in, in in the in the u.s playing football no when the integration of the 
the UK based players come in, the UK based reggae boys, the Paul Hall, um, the Burton, and those guys coming in. These are when some of the results got more favorable, such as um, we played against Canada and Dean Burton scored Jamaica one goal to zero. Then we played against Costa Rica again, Dean Burton scored again, Jamaica one goal to zero. Now we move from five points, we move from five points to 11 points. We move from five points, 11 points in two more games. Five to 11 in two games. Then now we went, went again and played play against the USA and drew 1-1. One, one. Deanne Burton's goal again. Now move from that to El Salvador to play El Salvador where the game drew 2-2 two, two, where we had um, Deanne Burton and Paul Hall goal. Then we drew with Mexico. So we, 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 we picked up three extra points there. One, two, three points on top of the 11 points. So that was how the, those runner fixtures went. So this is how the, the table finish. Played 10 games. We won three. Drew five and lost two. So we lost two, drew five. We already, <laughs> the thing is at this point, we already lost two in um, the cost and losing to um, Panama. And losing to Mexico. So hopefully we can pick up something good from that. And let that be a learning lesson. But as I'm saying people. What we're seeing right now. Is quite similar. To that of the 1998 World Cup. Quite similar. Which means that all is not, all is not lost. Because in the 98 World Cup. We, we, we go in the next two games. We would have picked up bad results. Um, one good result and a bad result. That's that's what happened in the next the next two game would have picked um bad result and a good result. So it would have actually been way 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 down below on the table. But because of how close the table is, that's what happened. Now, what I'm going to talk about, guys, three players. Three the three players that I believe they stood out the most in that game. Um, I, I already mentioned the name. And Andre Blake, let me go to Andre Blake first. Um, let me run through some of his stats. 90 minutes played. He made six exceptional saves, three punches. You can remember clearly one of those saves that he made. Oh, my word. That was a beautiful save. Uh, that kept us in the game. Someone someone on Twitter said that we should give um, Andre Blake <laughs> a, a, a statue or a hero. A hero. Um, what, what can I put it now? Status. Hero status in Jamaica because of how often he's saving us. Um, made one eye claims three saves from inside of the box, 39 touches. He completed 19 out of 21 pass. So, I'm telling you, this was one of his best games so far. Um, at a 90 percent, attempted 12 long ball, completing 10 of them. Now, Ariel Dews, he won two of them, two out of two. People, I'm telling you, he had a, a really, really good game. So, I'm giving him his notice. Very, very good game from Andre Blake. Um, the next player is Anthony Grant. Good game, people. I'm telling you, rigid in the midfield, extremely rigid in the midfield, and cool and calm and composed when he needs to be. Um, 85 minutes played, 43 touches, quite a lot of touches as well. Um, accurate passes, 28 out of 34, 82%. Um, yeah, I'm long balls they attempted two, completed one. Um, he encountered in a total of eight ground duels, winning four, so that's a 50%. Last position, position nine times, which is in the relatively Okay, so committed. Um, he was fouled once. He committed one foul and was fouled twice. Um, he made two interceptions and one tackle. Um, he had a good game. Let's be honest. He had a really, really good game. A strong defensive midfield game. He break up play when he needed to. My issue is that Kemar Tax Lawrence um kind of leave him a bit exposed. Kemar Tax Lawrence kind of um left him a bit exposed. What what we realized that when Kemar Tax Lawrence bump forward, he finds it difficult to cover in that gap. Anthony Grant, it's Anthony Grant's duty to go in that gap, but for too often, Anthony Grant has to um, throw away his own work to subsidize for Kemar Tax Lawrence um, defensive coverage. So I think um, that's something maybe a, a bit of, um, how would I put it now, a, a understanding of both of them playing that they need to work on. Um, a standard performance from Anthony Grant, I believe. Now the next man, the final man, the man who connects everything together. This man is a man, as I said, he's a connector. Um, lovely, lovely performance from um, Tyreek McGee. I'm being honest, people. A lovely performance. Very, very confident um, performance. And you can say this is a player that we can look forward to say he can add something. 
um, is, a, is a connector, people. He is a connector. When he dribbles, you can see where he utilizes space really, really well. He also utilizes his vision, very, very good vision. Um, even leading up to the goal that um, we score, where he, made, he, he breaks through that um, open space through the midfield, something that we have always seen team do to, um, do to us, break into the midfield. One of his key assets that I realized is ability to, to carry the ball. He loves to carry the ball close to his feet and then let go of that quick pass in those channels. Very, very good. I've seen it quite a, more, uh, quite a few times. Not all of those passes um, would connect, but I've seen it a lot of times, him attempting those passes. And the more he tries it, the more likely it is happening. So you will see that he lost position. It, it will look like as if he lost position quite a lot of time, but it's because of the passes that he's attempting to make. Now, he completed 84 minutes, um, 53 touches, quite a lot as well. Um, complete 30 out of 39 passes at 77 percent i think that should be a higher for attacking midfield but we know how the game was going out um he made uh, he made two key passes people the most key passes made on the pitch two key passes he attempted two crosses completing one and four long balls completing three shots off target one and shot block one as i said dribble attempt he, lo he loves to carry the ball close to his feet and then release those passes into those channels um two um dribble um completed Two dribble attempted, two completed. Now this is one of his weak areas. We all know that he needs to bulk up. <laughs> Tyrick Maggie, you need to you need to bulk up a bit. But I definitely think that maybe that is the, that's what gives you that fluency. Um, ground duels seven, only winning two of those. Um, aerial duels um two, and he didn't win any. Last possession fifteen times, and losing that possession, I believe that has a lot to do with the when he drops back into the defensive aspect of his game, and also the passes that weren't completed, that were intercepted. Um, um, he was fouled three times. No people. This this player, I would say, I'm giving this player a, a, a more noticeable shout. But Tarek McGee, love the performance. You definitely stood out um, tonight. You you definitely put something in in top of Whitmore head. Said, hey, <laughs> I'm not for the bench, no man. It doesn't matter who or which team is out there. You have to consider me. Great, great uh, move to put yourself in the fourfold of everyone's consideration. Um, and this is not the first that we're seeing this. It's not the first that we're seeing this. Now, the player that I want to speak about, people, I want to give some noticeable mention is Korberg. Three games. <clears throat> three games, people. Korberg, three games. This man is a machine. This man is a machine, people. Non-stop running. Unbelievable non-stop running at the Azteca, in, in the office, and, and at the, 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 the stadium, the National Stadium of the Costa Rica National Stadium unbelievable work rate unbelievable energy i understand that he's being played out of position i believe that we if, if even if we had that same amount of energy and work rate up front we would have gotten something from him because don't believe that he's not a legal player he is a legal striker you guys should know that but the work rate from core work is unbelievable unbelievable and i want to say you have done well you have done really really well throughout these three games i don't know how you do it <laughs> you are the only player you are the only player to amass all energy in all three games. We could see other players dip, rise and fall. Even Taxi. Taxi plays a, played a lot of games, but you could see that it dips a bit and then he rises. But you are... An Im you know, I'm not sure if many of you guys watch Naruto, but this man is running out, running off chakra. <laughs> this, this, man, this man seems to be running off chakra, people. <laughs> yeah, um, Korberg has a tail beast inside of him. He's running off chakra. But people... um. Thank you very much um, for joining me again, Military Guna TV people. Um, one point um, we walked away with, hopefully we can do something better and get some better results because we definitely need some better results. Guys, please smash the like button, subscribe, and also share Military Guna TV people. And I am out.